Good morning, artists. One of the cool things about being an art teacher is it forces me to learn more about art that I didn't know. What's awesome about art is that people all over the world have been making different kinds of art for as long as there have been people. And that means there's always more to learn. So one of the things that I've been learning about this week is the art of the Islamic world. My ancestors all come from Europe, and I know a lot about European art history. But art from the Islamic world is not something I know a whole lot about. It's very interesting to me, especially especially because the approach to art is so different. In Europe, for hundreds of years, art has mostly been focused on people, people and places. And the goal and the focus really became on making art that was as realistic as possible and making art that's told stories. But rewinding a couple hundred years during the era that's called the Golden Age of Islam, a different kind of art was developing. This art wasn't focused on showing pictures of people or places, and it wasn't focused on telling stories stories. Instead, this art was focused on beautiful, intricate patterns. The images behind me show you some examples of the beautiful tile work that you can see in mosques and palaces around the world. This kind of artwork combines precise lines and geometry to make beautiful, symmetrical, repeating shapes. So today I want to show you how you can make your own geometric art. And here are the materials that you'll need. You'll need something in a circle shape that you can trace. For me, I used a bowl. You'll need a piece of paper. You'll need a pencil and a pencil sharpener because for this we really need a nice sharp point. And you're also gonna need some things to color with. I like to use colored pencils. You might like to use something else. Oops, I almost forgot. You also need a ruler. Okay, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is find the center of our paper. So to do that, we're gonna fold it hamburger style and hot dog style. So we have four equal sections. Next, you're gonna take your circular shape and put it as best you can right in the middle of your paper. I used a bowl and just try to eyeball it to make sure that it's in the center. Once you've done that, you can start to make spokes. You should have something that kind of looks like a pizza. So make sure those lines are equally spaced. And then you're just gonna start connecting lines. So here I'm skipping every other line and making a box. I'm using my ruler to this because with this kind of art it's pretty important that I get the precise straight lines. Now I'm going to make another box, also skipping lines. So I have two boxes that kind of overlap each other and make an eight-pointed star. From this point you can get creative. Just start connecting lines. I'm going to make a smaller box within those other ones and I'm using the lines where they intersect to show me where I can connect those boxes. The most important thing to remember when you're making your lines is that we want this to be symmetrical and symmetrical means the same on both sides. In this case because it's a circular shape we want it to be the same on all four sides so anything you put in one section of your paper needs to look identical in the other three sections of your paper. Here I'm making a smaller square in the middle and an even smaller one inside that. Now that I'm done putting all my lines in place, I'm going to put some circles just over those areas where the lines intersect. And remember, everything I put in one of my four sections, I need to put in the other three sections too. So I'm thinking about that same symmetry as I'm coloring. So any color mark that I put in one section, <clears throat> I have to put in the other three sections too. And you can see I messed up a little bit there. That's okay, mess ups happen, just keep going. I drew this for, or I colored this rather, for about a half an hour. And this is one of those activities that it's pretty easy to lose track of time. You just start getting a groove and uh, enjoying just the pencil in your hand. And it's kind of like meditation, like mindful centering. Just keeping your hands busy and uh, letting your mind wander at the same time. So you can pick whatever colors you want. I tried to space out my light and dark colors evenly. You might have a different color scheme in mind. That's okay. Just have fun with it. In a lot of ways, this is kind of similar to the snowflakes that we cut out of paper earlier in the year. Uh, just in that it's symmetrical and that everything you do on one side gets repeated several times. But instead of cutting, we're doing all of our 
uh, lines with pencils and with rulers and with colored pencil. All right, finishing off my coloring there. And when you finish this activity, it looks really good hanging in a window with the light coming in from behind it. It almost kind of looks like you have stained glass. So that might be a fun way to display it. And then I'm going to add a little bit of pen just to darken up some of these lines and really make them pop out. You may choose to do that or not. That's, that's up to you. Like I mentioned, from start to finish, this one took me about a half an hour. And uh, the lines do need to be precise, so this is something that you shouldn't rush. You should just let yourself take as long as it needs to take. And there you have it. I had a lot of fun making this. Uh, like I mentioned before, this is not my go-to. Uh, if somebody handed me a blank piece of paper, usually I would probably draw a person or a place or something like that. But it was really nice to be pushed outside my comfort zone and to challenge myself with something that I don't usually do. So you might want to do the same. Whether you do this one or something else, the most important thing is that you are taking some time out of your day to exercise your creative muscles and to stretch yourself. I look forward to seeing what you made and I hope you have a great time. See you later.